Hello, my name's Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV7. You're watching a show called Conversations with Fred. Each week I have different men and women from our community. They come on and talk about issues that concern you, will make your life easier, and quite frankly, very interesting. I'm delighted to have one of our county commissioners with us today, my good friend Stevie Wilson. Stevie, thank you for joining us, coming out on a hot day like today. My pleasure, dear Thank friend. Thank you for coming. Yeah, sure. Now, Stevie, I want to start the show with, uh, first I want to say something the public doesn't know. The Board of Ed has let me for years be kind of a one-man school. And I very often get students who have problems and issues uh, that, you know, make life difficult. And I want everyone in the public to know that uh, you, unbeknownst to the public, several times have helped me out with children who don't have clothes, need some basic necessities. We've gone with their parents to different stores and bought them clothes. And, and you've given quite a significant amount. We're not talking $10, $20. We're talking hundreds of dollars. So I want to publicly thank you for that and let the community, you know, I know you wouldn't want me to do this, but I'm going to do it because I think they need to know you're not afraid to help young people, and I thank you for that. Well, you, you are welcome, and they are welcome. Uh, I think there's always room. I mean, there are always the cases that the institutions of the county can't handle, and having somebody like you around to, to point them out is well, really... You, you came to the it, rescue. It's, a, it's really, a blessing. I want to publicly thank you, and no. I know other commissioners do it too, no, and, but I appreciate all. you. Now, but before we get to the whole, some county questions, a little bird told me that you're mentioned in a book or books being associated with or having known uh, Bob Dylan. Is it true, not true? You want to comment or anything? Or? Yeah, I can comment on sure. it. I, yes, it is true. A lot of Dylan biography, biographers over the years have called me up because I had a period of two or three years in my life when D Dylan was just getting started when we were quite close friends. So and this I, is in New York or around the country? Well, it was actually in Charlottesville and in New York, oh. and I had quite a, spent quite a lot of time with Bob when he was just getting rolling, and uh, so... Very so, good. So this 60s, 70s, It happened 50s? to be a period when he was at his most uh, inventive, so the biographers quite often call and want to know, you know, what one's That looks, Steve, that are. looks good on the resume. I know Bob Dylan. New. Are you yeah. uh, new? You're not in touch with him now. No, no. But the, and it was 50s, 60s, or uh, between 61 and 63 or four. Okay. Well, yeah. Congratulations. That looks good on the resume. Okay. Well, uh, it's a curiosity, but I think if there are two people that seem elusive in society, but people, if they could drop in and and get to know them, the two people that would be, in some ways, the most difficult to get a hold of, but you'd be interested in would be Dylan and John Lennon. Oh, poets, so to, so to very be, bright people. So to be friends with one of them during that period of time is... A is lot a, of karma points. You went on that one. That was an interesting, an interesting uh, moment. Okay. Now, yeah. Steve, I, I got to yeah. tell you, we, we, we've lived here... The, I'm sorry, I got to finish up. Do you want to I'm finish? finished. Okay. We've lived here about 45 years. I don't think in the whole time I've been here, I've ever seen a commissioner... As, as hands-on you are with different parts of county government, different departments, whether it's EMS or finance. Talk about, uh, share with us some of you know, your experiences and how you are hands-on as a commissioner. I, just by disposition, found, find it most interesting to, I think what the government is supposed to do is produce services. And... It's a department store. We have aging, we have sheriff's department, we have health department, emergency services, finance, detention, airport, a bunch of different things. And I find the operations of those things, the premier thing that I think the public wants to get done with their tax money. So I have, that is what I concentrate on. Other people deal with the relations of Queen Anne County government with God, and with the sheriff <laughs> and with the legislature and you're, you're down to the real yeah i'm i'm real kind stuff. of trying to get the laundry washed and the roads yeah. paved and that's been my general direction ever since i got in this and i've had i think quite good results in in the departments that i work in well, for instance, I know one of your main areas of interest is EMS services. Tell us a little bit about your involvement with there and what, what services, you know, a lot of the people, you know, they might see an ambulance go by, they don't know, what, what, what do we got? 
Well, when I got started in this about uh, probably 20 years ago, I was not then a commissioner, but I was, uh, I'd been on a number of the county boards and the park board and the airport board. And I got interested in emergency because we don't have a hospital. And what that meant was interesting because within Queen Anne's County, Queen Anne County's easy reach are the best hospitals in the world. Sure. We are, I mean, this county is unique in having Johns Hopkins trauma, the uh, University of Maryland uh, stroke and, and uh, heart attacks. Anne Arundel's a brilliant hospital. We had this array of terrific hospitals and in some ways, it was even better than having a bad local hospital which absorbed these cases. It's in the world's finest, just across we the country, right? So what, what was the missing link? And it was the delivery system. And having sorted that out, I have been promoting, and I think vigorously, and I think with very considerable effect, the delivery system, the EMS, emergency ambulance system in Queen Anne's County. So Queen Anne's County has more than a dozen fire companies with ambulances. But inside that network, we also have five stations of county ambulances that have the highest level of technology, of training, of protocols, of drugs, of I, certainly any any equivalent ambulance co company or situation in the state of Maryland. And I would say it's the equal of anything in the United States. We okay. have an absolutely terrific operation. And why we have that is because we have patients and we have hospitals that are at some remote distance. So if you have a heart attack, we need to get you there alive. As quick as we can. So that's a question of delivery time and what equipment can you put on and training can you put on those ambulances. So for years, what I've done is to work on that. And you can ask the ambulance folks, but they don't come to us and say, can we do this and that? I go down there and say, what can we put on those Vehicles, um, rescues, and help people out. Right. So that our success rate of picking up, let's say, heart attack or stroke victims is unique in that it's probably 99%. If you are breathing at all, we will get you alive. Get you somewhere as quickly. We'll we get can. you somewhere. Now, whether you live through that experience, that becomes the That's hospital. Yes. But in Queen Anne's County, we will get you the best access to it, the best transport. And I have been doing that, and it is my... It's one of your top priorities, right? If not your top priority, That's right? That's it. Well, as a 74-year-old man, I appreciate it. Right? Yeah, well, everybody's going to appreciate I it. Bet to, when you're the lying day, on the ground and someone yeah. you need somebody there, they get Well, I think there are things, you know, schools get a lot of representation. There, there are things in the county, but, but emergency care doesn't usually have a constituency. Well... I am the con I, I am absolutely full out supportive of seeing that that operation is absolutely as Top funded notch. and well run and and it is. I'm extremely proud of the Good. staff. Scott Haas, Wheatley, and company are terrific. Good. Well, you know, it's good uh, citizens watching this program. That's kind of a relaxed, hey, thank goodness. I know if emergency does take place. It's going to be take place response. for everybody sooner or later. One day or another, right? You know, okay. I think about Symphony Village, and I yes. think about we, we, we work all the time on what our response time is. Everything we do is tracked by time. I mean, and, and nowadays, with the jam-ups at the hospitals, which have been increasingly more arduous to get through, right. our typical unload time, for instance, our, the main hospital we use is Anne Arundel, at that and Shore Hospital in Easton. And from when we get an ambulance at Anne Arundel to when we get it rolling back, and I mean, just out the door is an hour and a quarter, so if you've got 40 minutes getting over there, an hour and a quarter unloading, a half hour ride back, and then you have to clean the ambulance up. And if it's had a COVID in it, that's a three hour it's process. A whole other process that takes place. You wind up being able to maybe with one shift of workers in a machine, it'll tie up a whole day. So, and we run 70 transports a week, every week. 70 which a is, week in Queen Anne's County. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, very regularly. It's quite statistically interesting. Yeah, we do about 10 a day. Which, which every day, ten people are being taken transported somewhere. out of the right. county in our in our machinery, not just the fire companies, right. Right. because they. So anyway, that's that's what we're doing. Now, how about let's go to another area. Uh, I'm constantly told by people through your efforts and other people's efforts, our financial situation in Queen Anne's County is mighty good when it comes to bonds and our budget and things like that. You want to talk? Because I know you're kind of hands on with that and a big area of interest also. Well. A county's operations can only be about as good as the financial backbone behind it. That's the skeleton that holds the whole thing together. Right. So I have been the liaison to finance for years and years now. And when I got in, we were on credit watch, and we we have within three years got now, up to... Now, explain to the credit watch as being a little shaky in our financial footing or what? More than shaky. Oh, okay, During, we're hurting. And the great... <laughs> 2008 to 10 meltdown, the county had not properly prepared for that situation. Oh, okay. And that the county went into a default situation in which we were $20 million in the hole in one Queen year. Anne's and we had to fire of our 600 and some workers, we fired 140 mm. of them mm. in 2009 and 10. And then uh, raise taxes and uh, uh, otherwise tried to repair that damage. And as we came out of that recession, the county began to recover. And uh, ever since then, we have been in an absolute upward trajectory. And we went by 2013 or 14, we were, we were able to go back from that. And usually bond rating agencies, they're the people that tell you the level of your credit right. are quite reluctant when you've had a mess like that happen. It's sort of like a bankruptcy. They're fairly reluctant to trust you because you're, if you made that mess, why wouldn't it happen again? Why would it keep happening, yeah. So <clears throat> um, we've been able to go up there and... Now, up there is New York. You actually have to go to New York and negotiate this? Is that correct? Yeah, is that I, okay. I have done that for <clears throat> years, and I uh, fashioned a series of uh, discussions and arguments and explanations of what happened, such that by, oh, several years ago, we got AAA bond ratings across the board. That's the top. That's, That's as good the, as you can there, get there, as a county. There's no higher you can go. Now, meanwhile, we built up the county's reserve uh, finance condition. So I was always concerned because it's terrible for a county first to have that happen. You don't make it's mistakes. It's a blemish. It's embarrassing. You don't yes. make mistakes. Well, it's more than embarrassing. What about the 140 county workers that got, yeah, thought they jobs. had a job yeah. and got canned? That's it's a tragedy. Uh, unconscionable. It's a tragedy. Yes. It was mis mismanaged. I knew some of them. It was terrible. Yeah. So anyway, I don't want that ever to happen Good. or close to happening Good. again. County workers, you can take a deep sigh of relief. you got a man in your corner here, okay? Yes, I am dead set against anything. Like so one thing we did and that I was promoting and which has happened is that we have built up a very strong reserve cash position so that we uh, have the highest amount of cash relative to the amount we spend per year. So if there is a recession and we begin to lose tax revenue because of falling right. house values or falling income because the income tax component of our, uh, of our county revenue stream is 45% at this point. If that declines, we've got enough cash reserves to handle any typical recession for two or three years without either cutting workers, cutting services, or raising taxes. Yeah. So that means you're armored up against that. Now, we would certainly make some, you know, recessionary moves. And when the, when the pandemic hit, the county commissioners together cut our expenses, and we reacted immediately to that. But we have now counteracted that reaction as the economy comes back. But we're very alert to the trends in the economy and... Uh, I had started life as a bank analyst on Wall Street. So th these guys we go to and talk about our credit ratings are 
I, I know what they want, and I know... You know how to play in the major leagues when you get into New York, right? I have been... So we can say in 2021, Queen Anne's County is in real good financial shape. Fair statement? I, yes, that's, okay. that's correct. There's a lot of people sighing out there when you said probably won't be tax increases, yada, yada, yada. No, right? so we're no strong absolutely that. not. Well, good. All the county commissioners, yeah. job well done. Stevie, another area I know you're really interested in and involved in is the Bay Bridge. The people in Ken mm. Island are constantly, you know, everyone mm. from Ken Island comes up here and says, we got to do something at the Bay Bridge. Come on, tell me where we are, what you think's going on. Well, the truth is that everybody can see what the problem is and that it's not one that the county can solve. The entire management operations of the Bay Bridge are dominated and completely operated by the state. State level. And that the county's influence over the state is infinitesimal. Okay. So, amongst other things, we are a county of 50,000 people on one end of the bridge. Anne Arundel on the other end of the bridge has 500,000 people. A little more push and pull over there, right? Well, <laughs> multiply by 10. Yeah. And that's a lot. Yes, so, there, our influence compared to Anne Arundel's is absolutely minimal. So, we are living with what the state does. And if you follow as I do, and I could get you for some future show. Sure. I had a meeting. I'm on one of the two members of the Bay Bridge Authority, along with Jim Moran, the Bay so-called Bragg Committee. And they uh, they uh, are absolutely up to capacity at this point. You can rearrange the cones. You can take down the make toll booths. You can speed up. You can make some minor tweaks to the system. But there are only just so many cars that th two and three lanes of traffic can, can, handle. can handle. And we're at that limit now. And from here on in, any incremental growth in traffic is going to very quickly le lead to almost permanent backups. And that this is a very um, influential uh, and... and uh, it's, it's going to be in a very irritating and, and difficult situation. But it's situation. going to stick with us for a while, right, you think? A while seems like infinity right okay. now. <laughs> well, I mean, it, the, the current belief is that if the state did manage or decide to build another Bay Bridge, it would be 15 years. And the growth that would naturally occur, occur in 15 years, if you're already at, at capacity, it's it's fairly hard to contemplate exactly what the effects of that kind of growth will be, yeah. will be. so that that's going to be a very ongoing situation now we can talk about trying to keep people off back roads and we do we have sheriff Hoffman yeah, and Hoffman been, and this gang out there every, every week weekend. but the state roads even the exits to off of route 50 everything is controlled by right. the state and only the, the only roads that the county owns are the county, the named roads. Right, right. Anything that has a number on it, Route it's 8, Route 18, is state property, including all the exits onto them. So when we've said, can we block an exit, the answer is no. No, it's a state so, road. So that's, that's how it is. Okay. Now, look, you mentioned you talked about growth. And have we reached the, and we're talking comp plan now in the county. Yeah. Yep. Have we reached the point on a, like a Ken Island, other places in the county where water, sewage, sanitation. Have we, reached, have we reached the ceiling on some of these things in terms of big growth, big changes in the county? What do you think about that? Is that? I think that's one of the absolutely most important issues that's going to be happening, the understanding of that in the next year as we go into and through the next election. Well, help us out with it. Yes, most of us don't know. Because we are close to capacity in the schools. We're running at 90%. If we run over, we exceed with the students that come into the system, the amount of capacity, and we have to build a school. High schools these days are what, 70, 80, oh, 90 They don't million. come cheap. You don't buy them cheap. And anymore. now the county has to pay. It used to be our fraction was 40. I think it's 60% yeah. now. So that would be a $60 million borrow. Yeah. And you can school. figure out that's a nickel or a dime on your taxes at least, and, which we could not avoid. So regulating the number of p 
people. We need to meter this out in a slow way so that the county can grow its way uphill slowly and in a way as to not discombobulate my tax situation <laughs> here because we're in good shape. But it, it was it's, it's, it, that, that good shape could look could go to hell go very quick. one school later. I mean, right. it's, it's amazing how distressing. You can handle a lot of problems, but one or two schools will put you right dead right smack. Right back in the hole again. Yeah, right which, back in the hole. which we don't want. So we need to absolutely keep an eye on, 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 on that. So in terms of the general capacity of the system overall, you look at the Bay Bridge, it's at capacity. Schools close to capacity. The sewer down on Kent Island is now just about, we are out of excess capacity minus a small fraction. And if there's gonna be any left to deal with situations, there are some areas of the Kent Island sewage field area that probably still need to be picked up in the system. Right. And we need to have a little capacity to handle them, capacity to bring in some more businesses, a pa capacity to handle the build out of some of the lots on Kent Island that got created by the ski program. All over the place, what little we have needs to be saved and devoted to those essential uses. Right. Because not only do we not have much more capacity, but the state would not grant us the capacity to build more, capa build more capacity. Build more capacity. We are at a cap in the state on how much pollution Queen Anne's County on Ken Island can put in oh, the is bay. That right? okay. And that, that's it. That's it. We've that's, reached it. We've reached yeah, it you can't, we can't go spend 50 million and build it, even if we wanted to, which I don't, and build a sewage plant because we wouldn't, it wouldn't get licensed. Right. So the county has got to begin to adapt to that reality. Now that said, I don't regard this all as bad news because I'm a basically conservative person. And when you think about what the word conservative means, I think it means it's something to do with conserving. <laughs> and if, if, what is it we're conserving? Green space, the capacity to go to a supermarket and not stand in a line 35 people a long. Quality, a whole quality of the life. A whole right? quality of life. We need to keep this county, conserve it like it is, not project it into a future that's just stop lines and crowds and rising taxes and other, which right now it's imperiled by the fact that people are moving from the cities out with telecommuting. Mm -hmm. The country is becoming more attractive. We are right on the, we are the bedroom edge of the- We're close mega, to the Baltimore, Washington, heavy place, Annapolis. Right? Annapolis. So we need to, con to contain that growth and make this thing stay nice for the public. Okay, and we've I reached am, the capacity in a lot of areas, haven't we? We are, we are, we have used up a lot of the slack in the system. It doesn't mean everything's at a stop, but it does mean of, cautious and, 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 and practiced eye or experienced eye at guiding where the hell we use what we got left. Okay, think before we act, perhaps. Now, Steve, you've got about five minutes left. Let me ask you, uh, if you had a magic wand, because I, I know you're involved in we so do, many things. I do. I have you, you, do have, I have you Fred. Oh, okay, you're in trouble. That's a lightning <laughs> rod. Is that a magic wand? If you had a magic wand, uh, mm -hmm. as a county commissioner, are some pet projects you personally like to see get past the next couple of years or what, next term well, or this term? I'm, I'm very pleased we're going to... We, I've just finished writing up the last of this uh, YMCA agreement okay. for Centerville, okay. which I think... Which is, is going to be our neighbor here. I think it's going to be a big plus. That is yes. going to be a very uh, elaborate and good facility for the town and this part of the county. Uh, it's going to have multiple pools and all kinds. I think it's going to be a real attraction. Oh, what an attraction. It's going to be indoor, outdoor pools, uh, gym capacity increase, all types of wonderful things happening. The senior center, which... Yes, was, which I'm, I'll be using. <laughs> Fred, you're the main senior. I mean, please. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's on its way now. We okay. had a groundbreaking, and uh, we've sent them out a contract. They are uh, there's six tractors out here today when I drove up. Well, right? it, it's not when they get started. I'm the you guy that write the write the guy the guy that's trying to write the contract that 
it has a termination date so that the thing they are now um, if they sign this latest iteration of our contract it has to be operational in two and a half years i'd like to make it quicker but at the moment my understanding is they have about nine or ten million in the bank on a 15 million dollar construction project okay so not only do they have the construction difficulties that are presented by building something in this very busy year in which you can't get materials and labor. Mm -hmm. But they tell me you can't get sheetrock. I have a builder says you can't get sheetrock now. Yeah, you can't get Crazy. anything now. So that's, that's a problem. And then also that they need to raise enough money to cover the, the gap in between 10 million and whatever this thing finally costs. And, but all I know is if they sign the contract we sent them a couple of weeks ago, It'll be done two and a half years from two weeks ago. Okay. Steve, and your question I ask all the commissioners who've come on the show, Middletown, Delaware, in the time I've lived in this county 40 years, Middletown, as you, when you were growing up and up till recently, was just a crossroad. Now Middletown, Delaware has every store you need, every big box you need. Do you think that growth will come to Queen Anne's County from the north? Is that a possibility we need to think about or not? It, 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 of course it's a possibility, but is that what Queen Anne County wants? Yes, okay. Because let's look at what Middletown, Delaware looks like. It looks like an <laughs> outskirts. <laughs> it's a bunch of bad developments outside Moscow. There's absolutely no planning. No. It's, there are dozens of sort of giant chicken yeah, from house. Amazon, the Chinese food. Well, let's anyway. not talk about the stores. The stores yeah. are there because there are thousands and thousands and thousands of kind of chicken house apartments mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's no planning the traffic is backed up for hours there it is an area that has regulated nothing so it has everything but it's every every uh, green space every social advantage did you see any giant parks coming up there? No, 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 no nothing. It's like all cement, pavement. Yeah, it's, I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're impervious surfaces that they have <laughs> paved their corner of the, of the, <laughs> the planet. <world. laughs> and that's not, I, I believe, where, where Queen Anne's County should go. So uh, if you're asking the question of what would I like or what, I think that our zoning laws, if we enforce them and strengthen them, will give us a nice level of commercial Good. and attractiveness Compromise. of balance. But right now, we don't have all the stores that even Easton or Annapolis has, but they're 20 minutes from us. Sure. We also have fourth lowest tax rate and a lot of green space. And when you don't overbuild, what happens is the value of people's houses that are existing go up because sure. of shortage. So, these are not unattractive facts to the long-term history of the county. Once you've done something like Middletown has done, there's no going back. No, it's a mess. It's, it's, a, it's a crossroads. It's all it is. It's a crossroads. Well, it's worse than a crossroads. It's a mess. <laughs> okay, we'll be nice and all of our friends so in I, Delaware. You right? know, maybe somebody would like that, but I, I think that the citizens would like to maintain a kind of rural feeling and, and a kind of easygoing life that we have sure. now. It's special to Queen Anne's County. Yeah. Well, Stevie, our time's about up. First of all, I'd like to thank you and your commissioners. You're doing a great job. And I mean, it's, if I'm watching this show, I'm, hey, we're financially sound. Someone's thinking about the future. A lot of people dealing with reality, and we kind of see what's going on. So we thank you for your great efforts on that, all right? Last thing, if people, I know you're always great. I can call you any time with a question, and you always come to the rescue. If the public wants to get in touch how would you like them to do it? Go through the commissioner's office. Someone has a, someone's watching this show. Hey, I'd like to talk to Commissioner Wilson. How do they do that? With Easy you? to do. I mean, sure. all you do is go on the county website. My phone number's there. And, okay. You know, I'm accessible to anyone, anytime. I, I answer the phone. Good. And, you, yeah. and, and for the public, he does answer the phone. And not only that, but he returns your phone calls, which we thank you for. Okay, that's important. Well, look, thanks a million for coming on a warm day like today. Now we're going to both go back to our swimming pools and relax, all right? I'm okay. not going. You're not going to the swimming pool. Okay, all right. Okay. Go ahead, Fred. All right. <laughs> My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for joining me with uh, County Commissioner Stevie Wilson. Uh, my time's up. Thank you for your time. 
We're going to see you next time. And thank you, Fred.